So here's our programming assignment. In class, you already programmed a particle filter for a really simplistic robot that was able to measure ranges to landmarks and moved pretty much like a trash bin. Now I'd like to replace it with a more interesting robot that is more realistic. In particular, I'd like you to use a car. So here's a car. A car tends to have two fixed tires and two steerable tires in the front. Suppose the location of our car in a coordinate system is given by its x coordinate and its y coordinate, and I'm picking the halfway point on the v axle as the reference point, and by its heading direction, theta. So the state will be x, y, and the orientation, theta. Then this car also has a steering angle, it's called the alpha. The question is how is the state affected by driving a certain distance d with a fixed steering angle? Assuming the initial state is x, y, and theta. It turns out to answer this, I also need to know the length of the vehicle, which I will just call L for length. That is a constant throughout our consideration. This is usually called a bicycle model. Obviously, it suffices to look at one pair of tires, because the other one, at least in approximation, runs pretty much parallel. So if you look at the robot locally, where we have a steering angle, alpha, robot length L, and we're driving the rear tire forward by distance D, then the robot will turn to the left. And its turning angle, beta, is proportional to the di distance that the rear tire moves forward, divided by the length of the vehicle, times the tangents of the steering angle. To now compute the changes of x, y, and theta in the local coordinate system, we realize the turning radius, r, of this robot is simply the distance that we drive forward divided by beta. So it's relatively simple math, which I don't want to explain in detail. This means that the robot is turning around a point over here, call it Cx and Cy, and after the turn, the vehicle is located somewhere over here. In global coordinates, here's the way we describe this, Cx is the x coordinate of the robot x, minus, now we go to the left, the sign of the robot orientation, before motion, times radius r. Similarly, Cy is this expression over here, y plus cosine of the orientation times r. And then after motion, we can go back from cx to cy to a new state over here, simply by adding in the turning radius beta. That is our new x is cx plus sine of theta plus beta times radius. And notice how this parallels this guy over here, except for two changes. What we previously subtracted, we're now adding, and we're adding beta to the argument of the sign. Same with y. And the orientation is just increased by beta, modulo 2 pi. Now this all works if the robot is actually turning. If the robot were to go straight, then r would become infinity by this division over here. So for small betters, in my code it's smaller than 0 0.001, we can approximate this all as straight motion. Our new x is the old x times our driven distance pointed in the cosine of the heading direction. Similarly for y, we go in sine of heading direction, and the heading direction stays the same. You could add beta, which is basically zero, to be slightly more precise, or you could just use theta. Doesn't really matter. So in this programming assignment, I'd like you to implement this piece of math over here in our particle filter. And to make sure you implement it correctly, I will give you some example data that you can check. So in our first part, I prepared a lot of software for you, basically copying the old particle filter software over and removing the motion and the measurement model for now. And in this case, I just want you to practice the motion model. So we assume a length of the road of 20. We initialize the robot with this length parameter. And for this first iteration, we assume no steering noise and no distance noise. I set the robot to 0, 0, 0 in the beginning, and then I cache away a number of motions. And the way to read those is this robot is moving by 10 in total with a steering angle of 0. Then it moves another 10 with a steering angle of pi divided by 6. And then it moves 20 again with a steering angle of 0. A pi over 6 is a left steering. So the robot should change its coordinates in the beginning just in the x direction because it's facing an x direction over here. Then turn left a little bit, go forward, and go straight again. Scrolling down a little bit, I also give you the code to run the robot. We've created it over here. 
you print the initial coordinate. And then for each of the motions in this list over here, we apply the my robot equals my robot move command and we print out the successor command. So if you get this right, this is the numbers I would like to see. Initially, the robot position is 0, 0, 0. That's just the one over here. It's our first print command. And then moves forward in x direction by 10. Orientation stays 0, so does y, because there's no steering. And now we steer. This affects x. It doesn't quite move 10. It only moves 9.86. In y direction, it moves 1.433. And its new orientation is 0.2886. And then we move straight again. And now the x coordinate becomes 0.3903, y coordinate becomes 7.12, orientation 0.28. So your code should output exactly the same values as over here. And just to give you a second test, so this is a sequence of 10 motions, where the road always moves 10 forward and always turns right by an angle of 0.2 in radians. And we look at the outputs, then we get the following array. You can see that the orientation starting at 0, which is the same as 2 pi, decreases all the way to 5.26. And you can also see the robot starts running in a circle. Whereas initially, we add almost 10 to the x direction, almost nothing to the y direction. As we come down here, we subtract quite a bit in y direction because now the robot is going on a circle. So you should look at these numbers over here and see if your code matches these exact numbers that my code outputs.